Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Today we're going to be using some super cute waffle flower stamps. This is, um, hmm, what is the name of this? Books and Coffee. I couldn't remember if it was Coffee and Books or Books and Coffee. My bad. So anyway, they might as well have named it Heaven because that's exactly what it sounds like to me. So we're going to be doing some, it's just a one layer card and we're going to be coloring in colored pencil today. So as you know, you watched my last one. Um, is it, I shouldn't say you watched my, like I'm assuming you watched my last one. Uh, if you watched my last one, um, I did some experimenting with some watercolors. I'm trying to use a couple of different mediums, um, like heading into the new year, just to kind of mix things up a little bit. So I'm working on Nina Desert Storm cardstock and I'm going to be doing um, just some colored pencils. Uh, I really, really love the set. I think it's so super cute. Um, so I stamped down like the stuff I wanted in the front, the book, the cup, the, the book and the cup are like big enough to carry a card all by themselves, which I love. And then one stack of books, then I masked those, not the stack of books because I wasn't stamping anything behind it. I put in my little woodland characters, which I think are so cute, especially the bear with his little spectacles. And then, um, the only one that was a little bit tricky, which you already saw me do, was the raccoon. So I had to use the mask to place the books and then stamp the raccoon first because I wanted him to be sitting on top. I wanted his tail in front. I'm going to do just a quick little flower doodle here on this cup just to add um, a little bit of interest. And I am using my EK Success journaling pen once I was happy with the way that it looked to go in with the black outline erasing away those pencil lines and then um going in and starting the colored pencils why can i why was that the most awkward sentence in the world do you know i don't know if you watch my channel frequently you know me and colored pencils have not always been friends um we're just getting around to kind of building up our own little relationship here I do like the way that they look. I especially like the way that they, the bright colors look on craft cardstock. Um, speaking of friendships that are in the beginning stages, me and craft cardstock, I could never find a, A, a craft cardstock that I liked, B, one that photographed any kind of decently, um, or a design really that worked because I just love that white um, card base so much. I just love it so much. Um, so my game plan with colored pencils is you want to work in light layers. So I filled the whole thing in with my lightest color. I'm going in and adding shading with a mid-tone and a dark, really basically for this flower. I'm just adding it to the base of the petal and the tip of the petal and then working my way back out to that lightest color. Um, these areas were, this actually did not take, I mean, well, coloring the whole piece did, but that was my own fault for stamping so many images. I'm not even sorry because I think it's totally cute, but, um, the coloring did not take as long as I thought it would. And I think it's because all of the images are super small. So again, I just, I went all the way out to my lightest color, but unlike with Copics, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep basically going over it until I have a smooth, um, completely filled in, uh, tech, like, the, the, what am I talking about? The texture of the paper. That's what I mean. So until that's kind of just, um, completely filled in and very smooth, um, you can also do this with like putting down one or two layers and then going in with Gamasol, um, which will blend the colored pencils together really nicely and kind of brighten them up. I did not want to do that with this time around. The last time that I used the Gamasol, which was actually the first time that I used the Gamasol, um, one of you had commented below, like, not to use it. The It's a chemical. You shouldn't be breathing it in. Um, I, I don't know. Colored pencil artists have been using Gamasol for years. I'm not saying that there aren't other alternatives, but I'm just letting you know that that is something that's an option. I also had a girlfriend, um, Lydia Fielder, who uses like orange, I think it's called orange zest. Um, and it's like orange oil is basically what it is. And I think she said you had to get it overseas. I don't, I don't think that you could buy it like locally. And she used that. Um, she was kind of experimenting when we were together, um, crafting one time. And she really liked the results of that. 
So um, that's something that maybe is a little bit more natural uh, if you're looking for something to blend them. I didn't use anything to blend them, but pencils this time around. Um, so here we're moving on to the green, which I just really just love, 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 love like this lime green um, combination, which because the last one that I did was the, was it Clearly Besotted? The Bookworm? I think it was. Um, and I made them green. I made all my little bookworms green and I loved it then and I love it now. I just, I think this green combination on the craft is um, just awesome. So I hope you guys had a very Merry Christmas. We did here in our house as well. Um, we, so I think it was like Black Friday. My husband um, saw a remote control truck, like a big remote control truck control truck my son super loves trucks super super loves them like with not our current f-150 but our old f-150 uh, my husband got like a cd with it and um it had you could it was i don't know maybe 40 minutes or an hour just all this interesting if you're into that information about um these f-150s and my son watched that thing like it was a movie like, I can't even tell you how many times we watched the informational DVD on the Ford F-150. But nonetheless, like, he would be telling people, like, oh, that's cast aluminum. I'm like, you're four. I don't even know what cast aluminum is. Um, but so he has just always super been into trucks. My husband, who is a big kid, has his own remote control trucks. And he's only allowed to play with daddies when he's supervised because my husband doesn't want them broken, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so we bought him his own remote, big truck, remote control truck for Christmas. And my husband was like, we don't really have anywhere to hide it in the house. Here's your uh, warning. If you're purchasing a home, don't buy a home that has no uh, storage space like mine. I love my house but I have no storage space. I have nowhere to put the things and I have so many things. Um, but anyway, so we were like, okay, we'll just leave it in the trunk of my car until we, you know, can find somewhere else to put it. So not even 24 hours after we put the truck in the trunk of my car, my son was outside helping my um, husband shovel snow. And while my husband was getting the shovels, uh, my kid opened my door of my car and popped the trunk. And he's like, look, daddy, a truck. My poor husband was like, are you kidding me? This thing didn't even last 24 hours. So we kind of went back and forth about whether or not to give it to him for Christmas or wait until his birthday to see if maybe he forgot about it. Um, we decided to go ahead and give it to him for Christmas, mainly, I think, because my husband wanted to play with the truck. But um, so on Christmas morning, I woke up to Santa came and he brought me a truck. So thank you, Lord, for... Um, just a child's lack of long-term memory because he did not even remember that he saw it or that we were the ones who purchased it. Thought Santa brought it for him, which is great, great, and wonderful. Um, and then of course, you know, he was completely spoiled, um, by Santa and then also by my, um, <laughs> mine and my husband's family. So he got lots of good stuff. We got lots of good stuff. It was, um, it was a really nice day. And we actually had a white Christmas, which is the first time in a long time that we actually had a white Christmas. It snowed. Um, and it snowed good on Christmas Eve. So there was, uh, quite, I mean, I don't, I guess I've never lived anywhere else other than Ohio. So I don't know what that looks like if you are consistently celebrating, you know, Christmas in Florida. But to me, it's a very strange <laughs> idea not to have some sort of snow or what have you. So I talked throughout this whole mug coloring, but I did want to just note very quickly, I had to go over this mug a few more times than the other things. I think it was because it was a larger area to get really good blending and to build up that pigment. I just had to go over it a few more times. So I, that's why I think that the other ones went so quickly because they were so small. So for this book, I wanted to give this book a little something, like a little title or something along those lines. So I... I don't know if you've been, I don't know, do you read? I don't know. I read a ton of books. My husband bought me probably like four books for Christmas. And I said, did you think when you pictured your future wife that you were going to be married to somebody that all you had to buy them were books and they were happy? And he was like, no, not so much. But I love me some books. I love to read. And um, so right now in like book covers, 
it's kind of like a minimalist kind of look right now, just very clean and simple. Um, I'm thinking of like, um, like Everything Everything or um, what's her other book? Um, bum, 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 the Sun is Also a Star, um, which I read Everything Everything and was really good. The Sun is Also a Star. I heard wonderful things about from my friend Lisa, but I have not picked it up yet. Nonetheless. Um, so that was kind of what I was going for. So I kind of outlined, like framed in the front of the book and then I wanted to do a gradient on the front. So just kind of all of the colors represented because that seems to be something that is kind of trending in um, book covers at the moment. So for the blending of all of the colors, I put down like blocks of the lightest color. So the lightest yellow, the lightest pink, and the lightest blue. And then I started kind of building them up and working in the darker colors. I just didn't want to start with the the darkest color um, because I wanted to make sure I was going to be able to blend them all together. And I was actually really ha happy with the way that the gradient came out. Um, I just had to, you know, keep filling in the texture of the paper, that's all, to, to get it to blend well. And this, just like I mentioned the last time um, that I did one of these videos with the colored pencils, um, it was kind of difficult for me to kind of get the edges, um, just to build up those edges. But I just think that's because I'm so wary of going outside of the lines, especially when um, I'm not going to be able to go back in there with a pen and fix them up. And I cannot with the um, with the colored pencils. I can't go in with a pen. I can outline them with a black colored pencil, which I do do because you know I love me that black line. But I can't go in with a pen and just kind of cover it up. So nonetheless, um, so yeah, I got four books for Christmas and I'm super excited. Uh, I just, me and one of the um, guys I work with, we kind of do like our own little book club. It's just me and him. I don't know if that's really a club, but um, so all year long we have been reading different books. We're currently reading uh, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens because um, I had seen back in like the 90s, I think it they did a movie that was loosely based on Great Expectations with um, Ethan Hawke and Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm really dating myself. Um, but so I had seen the movie, but I had never read the book. And I know like each school, high school, whatever, middle school system needs to make choices about what books they're going to have you read. I think a lot of people probably had to read Great Expectations. Side note, um, I used the white, which you can always use to blend colors. And because I wanted to make sure that was a smooth gradient, I just used the white to go over it. I also am using um, a couple of gray markers to shade um the back of the book, which is white. And then I also used it to draw a couple of lines where the pages would be. Back to the book talking, because I'm always about talking about books. So anyway, um, so I think that, you know, you can't possibly read all the classics. Everybody, um, you know, all of the school curriculums have to make choices. And so in my school, I did not have to read Great Expectations and I wanted to read it. He had already read it, um, but didn't remember anything about it because his long, long term memory is just it's not good. It's not great. Um, so what have we read so far? We've read great. We're reading Great Expectations. Oh, we're re the intermittently reading the Chronicles of Narnia, um, which I had never read and are amazing. I totally love them. I have seen The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but that was the only one I had ever seen, and I just loved the books. Um, C.S. Lewis is amazing. Uh, I, Mere Christianity, I read years ago, which was fantastic. Um, we read a couple of the Harry Potter books, which I have read all of them and own all of them. And he was like, I'm not a Potter fan. I don't understand. And I was like, just give it a try. So it's good in helping both of us kind of grow. Uh, there have been a couple that the other one has bailed on. Um, he bailed on Stephen King's It, which is hands down my favorite book. I love anything Stephen King, but I specifically love it. And he was like, he's depraved. He's a horrible human being. How could he even write about these terrible things and blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah, all of that's, I, I mean, I don't know if he's a terrible human being. I've never met the guy. Um, but some of the things that he writes about are kind of depraved, but I like his story, so I'm good with it. And I think he got pegged as a um, horror writer, but really he writes a lot, a lot of sci-fi. Anywho, um, so he bailed on that one about three quarters of the way through. I bailed on Dune. 
Um, I don't know if any of you have ever read that. It's kind of like a cult classic. It was just really poorly written. I, I'm not saying that the, the concept wasn't interesting. It probably was. Um, it was, we read it right after we read 1984 by George Orwell, just like, you know, dystopia, um, community kind of thing. Um, and it was very much a, in the similar vein, uh, but it was just, it was very bizarre. It was not well put together. I could not get through it. Um, so we've each, I guess, kind of had a failure. So what do you, I, tell me, what like, what is your favorite book? What is your favorite author? What are things you like to read? I'm always interested in um, just reading other things that maybe I wouldn't necessarily pick up because, again, you know, as we talk about with crafting and stuff, um, I think that it's good to kind of expand your horizons and um, be exposed to different things that maybe you didn't even know that you liked. So yeah, so back to this coloring. Um, I think these little woodland characters are so stinking cute. Like they have, um, I chose the, the two that were like peeking out to the right, but they also have a little bunny that's peeking out to the left and a little deer that is peeking out to the left. So you could have done one of those as well. For this little raccoon here, which I think is so cute, I'm going to use a lot of grays. I am, which I probably didn't even mention, I'm using Prismacolor pencils and I have the full 150 set. Um, but the interesting thing about their grays, about their is like it they're all called um like cool gray but they're percentages so the let me grab one of these here so this one's um 50 percent cool gray this one's 70 percent cool gray 90 percent cool gray um which no big shock i'm you know still picking up the cool grays versus the warm grays which are actually not called warm grays they're called french grays isn't that interesting I don't know why it's called a French gray. I should probably Google that to find out the information. But um, anyway, so I pulled out the cool grays to color in my little raccoon. You'll notice his little mask is kind of dark. Don't sweat it. We're going to bring his eyeballs back later on. Um, in oh, for the little for the little bunny, I did add some pink to his cheeks. I'm sure that you saw, and I just blended that out with white. It actually blended out really, really nicely. Um, so nothing like, I guess, to be concerned of there if you would like to add a little pink to their cheeks or what have you. For the deer on the side, um, you know, I did the, the white and I did it off camera because I had already colored the bunny white and so you could kind of see how that process worked. Um, for the shadows on the little deer, I just added it at the base of his ear, at the base of his nose, and then underneath his neck where kind of his chin would cast a shadow. For this little raccoon, um, his feet are in the forefront, so his belly and the rest of his body would be a little bit darker. For his tail, um, I added kind of darker shading to the left and the right sides of his tail to give it a little bit of a more round appearance. I also left little blank areas by his ears because I knew I wanted to make his nose pink, um, and I didn't want that there to be nothing else pink on there. So I filled in the little space for his ears pink. I'm going to use the same brown, I call them browns, they're browns-ish. Um, so I used a es espresso and then I used a pumpkin orange for the lightest color and the color in the mid-tone is chestnut. So I did use an orange for those. Um, I don't know, I felt like it just kind of fit. I wanted something that was going to be way warmer because this Desert Storm cardstock is a little bit cool. Um, so I wanted something that was going to kind of pop off from the page there, not to mention uh, when we get to it, the countertop table top or whatever they're sitting on is going to be in cool grays. Um, yeah, so let's just talk about perspective here for one second. Like these have to be the tiniest little woodland creatures. Like just the teeniest, tiniest little deer, the teeniest, tiniest little bears, because they're not even bigger than a book. Like how adorable is this? I bet you they're super friendly. Look at, look at his little spectacles. He just seems like the friendliest little bear in the world. And then you could have them as like pets and read books together. And wouldn't that be fun? I wish I had those. Um, 
with the bear, I noticed the same thing that I noticed with the cup, that it took a couple of more layers for um, me going over them. As far as coloring his eyeglasses, um, eyeglasses are clear, so you're not going to change the way that you cut. Like, I think some people get hung up on that because they have them on their face. Like, they're still going to, if you put glasses on and I looked at you, your face is still the same color as your face. So nothing special that you need to do there in the coloring. I am going to go over with a white colored pencil and just kind of um, fill in the edges that are uh, hanging over onto the desert storm. And then I'm going to use the side of it to just kind of do some lines and zigzags that would be like a reflection. So I'm going to use my T-square ruler to give myself a line for this table, floor, countertop, whatever. And then I'm going to start working on the background again. This is something that took a lot of layers because it is a much larger area. So I started with like a, um, what was it? Like a 50%? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was like a 50% cool gray. And I'm just adding in um, some darker shading in the back where it's furthest away from us. And then I'm also adding some shading around each of the objects that is sitting on the, we're just going to call it a countertop. Um, sitting on the countertop and then I'm going to you know go over that with the next lightest color blend that down um, and then eventually I showed you quite a bit of it but eventually I'm going to blend it out to white and then I just didn't feel like it was dark enough it's just a personal preference thing there isn't a right or a wrong way to do it it's not that this um like the way that I did it was wrong or it looked incorrect. It, it was just me feeling like it wasn't dark enough for the brighter colors that I had going on. Um, because if you know me, you know that I love me some like black and white and bright colors. And so I just thought that it needed a little bit more contrast to kind of stand out. Um, here we are, this is everything colored in and now I'm going back in and adding um, some darker colors. So this is, I still think the 50% that I'm adding, um, you can just see it a whole lot better because there's so many uh, layers built up. But then I'm gonna go back in with the, set, I think the 70% um, and start adding that to the back. And then I'm gonna do the, the same thing that I did before, which is blend them all the way out to white. I'm going to spare you that because it did take a long time. So, um, I also decided to kind of, now I, this matched so much better in, in real life. Um, I used the, that's how I knew they were French grays because I actually used some of them. So I used the 20% and the 50% French gray to just kind of outline my little characters that were up against the, um, so I did it with the 50 first and then went back over it with the 20 to kind of blend that into the background to just kind of set them apart. Very similar to the way that if I was using Copics on a white background, I would outline with like blue um, just to kind of make them pop. I, I'm going to go in with a super sharp black um, colored pencil and outline all of these images. Now I am not the brightest crayon in the box sometimes and halfway through I put lotion on my hands. That was hysterical. Like my hand kept sliding down the colored pencil. I, I had to wait. I had to like wait until it absorbed and then wash my hands and to make sure that I wasn't like just leaving it all over the place. So the other set that I'm going to use here is called First Step and I thought that this would be just such a cute book title. So one of the sentiments that's available in that step, or in that step, in that set is um, she believed she could, so she did. And that's the title of my book um, because uh, how true. And so I thought that that was just super cute to send to one of my craft girlfriends. In order for them to have eyeballs again, I'm going to go in with Ebony um, Nouveau Drops and give them their little eyeballs. I had quite a little disaster with that, but nonetheless... And then I did try to put some clear wink of Stella over my flower. It worked-ish. Um, it didn't really, I guess it didn't really absorb. I had to wait for it to dry. Um, but it is sparkly in, in real life. So that is the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.